know it's been a while. I figured I would turn on the camera and catch everyone up. Um, we have got a somewhat busy day planned. Um, we are finalizing our plans for the camper. We have our first event um, this week coming up. So my sister and I are going to get together and hash out some final details. And I figured I would just take you guys along for some of today. So right now I'm doing morning chores and I'm going to go ahead and get everyone fed and I will show you guys our newest additions. So the boys have named these girls Violet, right here, Violet and Rosie. And they're both little ewes, little ewe lambs. Seem to be doing well so far. Super cute. And we are actually still waiting on Meredith to lamb. Very heavily pregnant. Her bag is huge. So, yeah, we're just waiting. So Maggie's done really well with her lambs and now she's a first timer. Her mothering instinct kicked in. Maggie actually lambed early in the morning without our assistance. When we got out here, it was about 8 a.m. The babies were pretty much dry. Um, their cords were still fairly long and wet. So we went ahead and got some iodine on those and tied them off and just sort of sat around watching. We did a lot of, of observing the first day just to make sure that they were able to latch and that they were latching. Since we weren't here when they were born, we wanted to make sure they definitely got colostrum straight out of the gate. I actually supplemented um, initially just because I wasn't here. You know, I think they were only a couple hours old, but just to be on the safe side, I gave them a little bit of lamb and kid colostrum and everyone got a little bit of nutri drench which is like a vitamin supplement um maggie got warm molasses water and i'm still offering electrolytes um in her water probably through the end of this week honestly i just want to make sure she has what she needs to fully recover and I'm probably done supplementing these girls. Um, I will just keep an eye and make sure no one's slowing down on us. All right, these guys, two troublemakers. 
These guys were also below body condition when we had them sheared. So what we're doing to work on improving their condition is upping their pellet ration and we've also added a little bit of sunflower seed in there and we'll see. They've been going at it since Maggie delivered her lambs. So you can see Sloan's got open gash on top of his head. Avery's got an open gash on top of his head. Crazies doing what Rams do, I guess. All right, in the garden, Archer's working on building a table and I've also moved our meat birds into the garden and out of the camper and out of the shed because that's where they were for the first two weeks this is the table Archer's been working on complete with hooks for all of your what are the hooks for? They have a decoration. Oh. Yeah, so he's been working on getting this table built for the last couple days because he has been picking apart another table. So, very cool project, Archer. I'm impressed. And you can even send things on here, jackets or pencils. Yep. All right, here is our meat bird set up. These guys are coming in and out of this fence. They're still really small, um, so they can fit through the holes in the fence. It's actually not on, but I, I don't think they're big enough to actually do damage to anything I've got going right now. So I'm sort of just letting them do their own thing. The garden is fenced in. Um, they do make their way back inside the netting at night and pretty soon they'll be too large to fit uh, through the holes on the bottom. So we just kind of tuck them back in as we see them come out. Um, and this is where they're staying. So we brought these meat birds out here to the garden because I figured we're gonna have them for the next month and a half, two months. We're gonna be feeding them. This patch of dirt right here is going to be planted with zinnias. Um, initially, I'm thinking if I stick to my plan. So why not go ahead, get some extra organic matter on it. Go ahead. Hey, did you just turn the fence on? Okay, well, the fence does work because I just felt it. <laughs> turn it off. It's a little weak, Archer, but it's, it's on. Um, by adding the birds to this space, we're getting some organic matter. So we're feeding them, they're pooping, they're scratching through. They might find little grubs or bugs. They're gonna eat on those. They're gonna eat on some of this Bermuda grass that needs to be cut up or tilled under anyways. So it's really just a win-win. They get to be outside in the sunshine and the fresh air and you know, not all on top of one another and we get the benefits of the ground scratching and the additional organic matter so that's what's going on out here um that pool is there because they can go under it if it rains or if it's chilly at night and it actually has been a little bit cool these guys aren't fully feathered yet meaning they still have some of their little chick fluff archer I just got one. Um, they are going on three weeks old, I believe, but we sort of get them out as soon as we can. And we had one batch that didn't fare so well with that. And I, I can't really say it was the cold or if it was the fact that it took them three days to get here, but so far so good with these guys. We haven't had any casualties to being out 
early. So these are Jumbo Cornish Cross and we will butcher them in about two months. We're gonna go in and get them fed this morning. In like two weeks, this will probably be a problem, but it's fine for now. Got the greenhouse closed, so they can't hop in there and destroy anything. We like to sort of give them, you know, as much freedom as we can. These guys are still really little, so it wouldn't be a good idea to stick them out with our other flock of egg layers um, yeah so this is kind of a space that they can have to themselves unless they ruin the privilege by ruining my plants but it's my thinking that they'll be large and lazy by the time they're big enough to actually do damage to anything because these birds aren't meant to live past butchering date so I'm assuming they'll be fairly inactive as they start to get some weight on them but for now they're living their best life came to grab a quick strawberry snack. Got strawberries coming in the garden. Sally usually beats me to them, so I have to pick them when I, when I see them. Sally, look around so they don't go bad. There's strawberries in here. See that? Look at that. See that one down there? Mommy's got a, her hands full, so maybe you can eat those. Okay. Oh, see that bright pink pencil. You're just gonna take what I have? Yeah. Okay, I suppose. Let's see. So these berries spot. I'll toss that one. Um, they're coming in well. Got a little bit more size. A little bit more size to them this year. Lettuce making a comeback. Might get a couple salads before it gets unbearably hot and the lettuce gets really bitter. All right, so I've cracked the greenhouse door. It's supposed to rain today, so I don't think it's gonna get too hot in there, but since we're gonna go wrap up some loose ends on the other side of business, I don't want to leave that shut and have it be 100 degrees. I moved the citrus out, y'all. Show you guys a little bit of what's going on in the garden. It's our first 
sunflower planting down this row here all by hand I think um, the forecast is looking pretty pretty good so I'm going to be direct seeding sunflowers moving forward um, just because it's one less step so step over I've got some cosmos in right here some gomphrina and our last planting of sunflowers which is the golden light and a little bit further down got some euphorbia which I've never grown before I know nothing about so we'll see how that does and we've got some bupleurum so I also have bupleurum in the raised beds this is another one I've never grown before don't really know a whole ton about and I put some in the ground here because this is a cool season um, plant it's not gonna last all summer but I can at least gain some knowledge if it does poorly I know it needs to be in a raised bed with soil that is probably better than what I've got going in ground here so I've got some in the raised bed and I've got some in the ground and that way I know And then on this side, we've got a small patch of dahlias starting to emerge. That one right there. And again, um, you know, I just want to take advantage of the organic matter that I have. So all of this. All of these pine shavings that you see right here this is from the first week and a half two weeks of doing the deep litter method inside our chick brooder which was really just a cardboard box so every day every other day I'd come in throw a thin layer of wood chips on they would soil it because they're in the box um, pooping and everything like that and then when I was done with that box I came out here put the chicks in the netting and dumped those pine shavings that food that got toppled over and uneaten and the droppings are all mixed into these pine shavings and over time that will break down add some more organic matter to our soil and the pine shavings actually act as a thin layer of mulch, which will help retain some moisture in this little patch. So, yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing today is going to check out the camper and seeing if there are any little final touches we wanna add. And we're kinda going to do like a mock setup of what it would look like if we were to have an event and I'm going to grab some greenery some flowers and just put those in a bucket so that we can have them to sort of play around with when we get there and yeah then we're gonna hit the road all right so I've got a bucket of water a long sleeve shirt and a pair of gloves because well I need the bucket water for whatever I pick um I didn't want you guys to think I was crazy with the gloves and the long sleeve shirt but I definitely had an allergic reaction to these daffodils and I'm picking them nearly daily and I just put two and two together yesterday that I think that's what's causing my hands and my arms to break out and everywhere my legs my neck so um, I'm going to put this long sleeve on to try to protect myself in these gloves try and keep my hands from breaking out any further all right so got myself all protected I take off a glove to use the phone so that my hands don't continue to look like this and 
I am going to grab some of this flux. I'm going to grab some things at random, not things that we would necessarily be using um, because we do have our first event coming up and I don't want to waste any flowers. So this phlox needs to be cut anyways. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut that back and then I might pick some stuff from the woods actually. We've got some ferns coming in. Um, those extra little bells of Ireland right there that's not really enough to do much with so I might use that and um, anything else that's already blooming that would otherwise go to waste. All right, so here is our practice bucket. I don't know what this is. Maybe one of you guys can help me out. It's a weed here that's been growing, but it looks pretty and dainty. And so is this. So I've also got some chives, um, some phlox, um, one stalk that was ready and this is just you know what we're going to play around with today so um ideally each of these things would be in their own bucket but my sister has some buckets already so i don't want to have to tote three or four buckets so pile it in here and uh let's go all right i went ahead and picked a couple more things even though they don't match they are already blooming, so might as well put them to use. So I'm gonna add these to the bucket also. Sunflower, this has got a wonky head. Look at those. Wow, these actually aren't cutting sunflowers because they have all of this pollen, but for practice, we can use them. All right, let's go for real this time. All right, let's load it up. Alrighty guys, we're here. Boys are already inside. Have to bring some things in. Um, I'm not really sure. Here we are. I love the tapes, eh? We're gonna take all the blue tape off today. Yeah, all the blue tape. But we can wait just a minute. Right, turn it, Kelly. Turn it. Oh, man. Keep turning. Is it working? All right. So, it's like we're going to start taking some of the painter's tape off. And I'm really just going to set you guys up on a time lapse as we sort of prepare the inside and do a little bit of a practice run.
All right, so we ran through, we have figured out some items that we still need to bring into the camper. Um, we are going to work on doing some signs with our crickets so that we can bring in. And I think we're actually gonna come back out um, a couple times before our first event this week and set up again, run through, see what we're missing. That way when it's go time um, for our first event, hopefully we will have mostly nailed everything down. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video though and um, we will see you guys soon. Bye.